We've been, uh, since it, Christmas is this week, the year of 2020, which has been something to remember in and of itself. But Christmas will be coming up this next week. And so I uh, last week we taught on uh, the greatest gift. And this morning we want to speak about the greatest gift giver. This time of year, just a few days before Christmas, if you were to ask children who is the greatest gift giver, many children throughout the world would say, right, Santa Claus. But that is so far from the truth, so far from the truth. The greatest gift giver is and always has been God himself, your heavenly father. And we talked last week about the greatest gift, and that's the gift of salvation that we have through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood, took the punishment for our sins. He was, he died on that cross. He was buried. He rose again to be our ever living savior. And he offers us the gift of eternal life because our sins have been taken away. If we accept what he did for us on the cross, our sins are taken away by the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ. And uh, we're told in the Bible that uh, his blood takes away all sin. So it doesn't make any difference how heavy your sin load is. The blood of Jesus Christ takes away all sin. We talked uh, extensively about that last week. Well, after we accept Jesus as our Savior, Jesus continually uh, showers gifts down on us every single day of our lives. But do you remember last week when we talked about uh, when a gift actually becomes ours? A gift doesn't become ours because it's offered. A gift becomes ours when we accept it. The example of that is uh, gifts under our Christmas tree. They have names on them, but they don't belong to the people whose name is on them yet. They will not come theirs until we offer it to them and they accept it. Then the gift will be theirs. So all the gifts that God offers to us, we must be willing to accept them. So um, 1 Corinthians 2.12 says, uh, God has given us his spirit so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. So one of the gifts that he gives us that we'll mention briefly now is his spirit. And he gave us his spirit. Why? So that we could know and understand the wonderful things God has freely given to us and gives us every day. James one seventeen says that, all good and perfect gifts come from the Father. So every single day, every single day, you know, the thing that I found hardest in preparing this lesson was funneling it down. Because as I begin to look at scripture, it is absolutely filled with gifts that God has given us. First Peter uh, 1, 3 through 5 says, As we know Jesus better, as you live for Jesus, you get to know him better and better and better. Hopefully, uh, the more time you spend in his word, the better you're going to know him. Because this is where we learn who he is. So as we know, the scripture says, as we know Jesus better, his divine power gives us everything we need for living a godly life. He gives us everything we need that we can live a godly life. And by that same mighty power, he has given us all of his rich and wonderful promises. So make every effort to apply the benefits of these promises to your life. That's what the Bible says in verse 5. Make every effort. We have to make an effort Part of this, uh, the gift giving, and God gives the gifts, but we have to make every effort to receive the gifts that God gives us every day. So make every effort to apply the benefits of these promises to your life. 
You know, I just went through uh, uh, scripture and picked out a few and and just let me say there could be so many more. But for time's sake, uh, let's just look at some of the gifts that God gives us. God gives us his love. The Bible says God is love. And uh, in uh, Romans chapter 5 it's, and verse 5, I believe, it says, We know how dearly God loves us. But I think a problem lies in there because I think a lot of the time, if not most of the time, we don't really know how dearly God loves us. The Bible tells us that God wants us to know how dearly he loves us. You are very precious to God. He loves you so much he can't take his eyes off of you for one second. He gives us his love freely. God gives us faith. Did you know that? Your faith isn't what you've made it to be. God gives all of us a measure of faith. He gives everyone enough faith to believe the gospel. And after that, our faith grows as we, have, as we pray and we see victories and uh, God grows that faith in us. But our very faith comes from God. When I read the Bible, the more I read it, the more I find out it's all about God and it's very little, if any, about me. In the psalm, he said, I remember I just made them out of dirt. So his expectations, I don't have to have a lot of ability. I just need to have availability because God does it all in and through us. He gives us the gift of peace with God. Peace with God is different than the peace of God. Peace with God was accomplished on the cross. Jesus did that. He reconciled us to God, but he also reconciled God to us. People often say the God of the Old Testament appears so different than the God of the New Testament. No, it's the same God, and he does not change. He is no different. He said, I change not, but the difference is the cross. Because the Bible says if we're not for God, we're against him. So if we're not his friend, we're his enemy. And you say, well, you know, I've, I've never accepted Jesus as my Savior, but I'm sure not his enemy. Listen, I didn't say it, but God did. He said, if you aren't for me, you are against me. And uh, if you're not my friend, then you are my enemy. So we were all at one time enemies of God. But when... We asked him into our heart. We no longer were his enemies. We became his children. And therefore, we have peace with God because of what Jesus did for us. We have access to the Father. The Bible says, come boldly before the throne of what? Grace. We have access to the Father 24 7 day or night makes no difference makes no difference where you are because god is always attending to you he always has his eye on you he's always listening for you to speak to him so we have access to the father you know um often well I'll just, this isn't as good an example as some could be, but when I worked at the church, I told the, the receptionist, you know, if I'm in a meeting and I get a call from somebody, you know, if it's from whoever, take a message, I'll call them back when the meeting's over. But if anyone in my family calls, put it through to me. Why? Because... They, I always wanted my family to know they had access to me whenever they could call. And if I was there, I would always receive their call. They would never get put on a uh, hold or on a waiting list or a callback list. So sort of only bigger and better, we have that kind of access to God. 
to a holy and powerful and mighty God, we have access to him. It's a gift that he has given us. We have the gift of standing before God in grace. It says that we might find grace to help in time of need. You have time of need? Go before God and stand before him in grace. And he will help you in your time of need. This one might surprise you a little, but sometimes problems and trials are gifts from God. You say, Brenda, really? Problems, trials are gifts from God? Listen, yes, many times they are. So treat them as such and learn what God is trying to to teach us. And I hear people say, well, I wish I'd learn what God teach me so this lesson would be over. You know what? I don't ever want lessons to be over. I just want God to continually, and you do too, may not feel like it sometimes, but we all do. We want God to continually work in us and teach us. Uh, and um, Romans 5, 3 says that problems and trials, listen to me, Listen to what the Word of God says. Problems and trials, they are good for us. They help us to learn to endure. See what it said? Problems and trials, they are good for us. They help us grow. And they teach us to endure. God has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I think probably we take that one uh, as much for granted as any. We have become so accustomed to having the Holy Spirit in us that we don't give him credit for everything that he does. The Holy Spirit teaches us. The Holy Spirit guides us. He convicts us. He comforts us. And the scripture says, God has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. He wants to fill our hearts with his love. And he's given us the Holy Spirit to do that. But listen, if our hearts are full of anger and bitterness and all of those things, then it cannot be full of the love of God at the same time that it's full of things of, of the world. So God has given us a precious gift of the Holy Spirit, who is with us always. He's given us the gift of being saved from God's wrath. And you know, you may say, God has wrath? Oh yeah. That's what, uh, you know, the next thing on the prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. Every believer is gonna be taken out. And then that leaves only unbelievers on the earth. And it, at that very moment, uh, seven years, of tribulation began. And those seven years of tribulation are in fact God pouring out his wrath on an unbelieving world. So you get saved from that. If you've accepted Jesus as your savior, you're going to be out of here before that happens. And my friend, let me just beg of you. You want to be out of here before that happens. I want all of us to be out of here before that happens. You say, well, Brenda, if they're not, is there any chance for to be saved? Yeah, there's still a chance, but you know, it's a free gift right now. But if you get saved during the tribulation, you're probably going to get beheaded for it. It'll cost you something then. It'll cost earthly life and you'll gain eternal life, but still not as easy and free as it is right now. So I encourage you, make your decision now to follow the Lord and accept Jesus as your Savior. He has given us the gift, I've talked about this already, but to be reconciled to him. He has given us grace, the gifts of grace and mercy. Grace is God giving to us what we do not deserve. And mercy is God not giving to us what we do deserve. Aren't you grateful for the gift, gifts of grace and mercy? And it do, and he does give us the gift of peace with God. 
we talked about before, but he also gives us the peace of God. He said, I give you peace, not like the world gives. And you know what makes it different? The peace that the world gives, circumstances have to change to accomplish it. The war has to stop. The fighting has to stop. The argument has to stop. Something has to change for a worldly peace. But God I give you a peace that's not like the world gives. I mean, your circumstances do not have to change. God can give us a very deep-seated peace in the midst of whatever we're going through. And it's a gift that he offers, and if you'll accept it, no matter what you're going through, you can have the peace of God reigning in your heart. He gives us the gift of joy. Do you ever just think about our God being joyful? Do you remember what he says when we're in, in, into heaven? Enter in, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into what? The joys of who? Your Lord. Enter into the joys of God. That's what heaven is. The joys of God. God is a joyful God. Aren't you glad? We're going to have a good time throughout eternity because our Father is joyful. He's given us the gift of victory over sin. You know what? I sin every, every day, and you do too. But we are, but we have victory over that sin. I'm not condemned by that sin. Why? Because Jesus took the punishment for my sin, and his blood takes away all sin. So he has, God has given us victory over sin. He's also, in giving us victory over sin, he has given, given us the gift of the ability to say no to sin. He always makes it possible for us to say no to sin. Sadly, we don't always do it, but he has given us the power to be victorious over sin. He made us a member of a godly family. He placed us in a family of believers. And we are brothers and sisters. And it feels like a family, doesn't it? Yes, because he makes a, he's given us a gift of being in his godly family. God gives each one of us spiritual gifts. Everybody has at least one gift. It's a spiritual gift that God has given you and he's given me for him to use through us uh, to do uh, to do kingdom work, to uh, lead people to the Lord, either by praying for them or witnessing to them or just living a godly life before them. God has given us all at least one gift. It's quite a gift giver. Everybody in the world has at least one gift from God. So whatever that gift is, and I'll be honest with you, I'm not even sure I know what mine is, but it doesn't matter. Because whatever it is, I want God to use it. God knows what it is, and he knows how to use it. I just have to be available. I don't have to try to uh, hone my gift to make it better. No, God gave us uh, the, a complete gift that he is able to use through us. We don't have to worry about it. He has given us the gift of future glory. That's in Romans 8, 17 and 18. He's given us two great intercessors, the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. You know what an intercessor is? It's somebody that goes between two people or two persons. Jesus and the Holy Spirit is the intercessor between us and God. And the Bible says when we pray and we don't know what to pray for, that Jesus just knows in our heart what we're asking and he intercedes for us. He tells the Father. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are intercessors for us. He has given us the gift 
of the power of God. Second Chronicles 16, 9 says, God shares his power. God shares his power with those who are completely his. Do you want more of God's power in your life? I do. Then you need to be completely his. You don't need to be trying to live for Jesus part of the time and live for the world part of the time and live for yourself part of the time. He said that he, he shares his gift with those who are completely sold out and belong to him. So you want more power in your life? Give more of yourself to God. And God has great power. The greatness of his power he has the power to do the sum total of all things, big and small, big things, small things. He has the power to do the sum total of them all. It's a powerful God. He's given us the gift of prayer, and what a precious gift that is, where we can just talk to the Lord. And I really um, advocate that you have a conversation that you just carry on with the Lord throughout your day. Uh, I call it sometimes chit-chat with God because anytime we're talking to Him, it pleases Him. And that's what prayer is. It's talking to God. So we need to be in that attitude of talking to God from the time we get up, first thing in the morning, last thing at night. We need to be talking to our Heavenly Father. He has given us the gift of wisdom. I, I'm going to save this for another lesson at another time. But James 1.5 says, If you lack wisdom, ask from God. And He gives to everybody liberally, and He will never reproach you for asking. So you're in a situation where you don't know what to do and you need God's wisdom, ask for it. He's promised to give it. He's not going to withhold it from you. That is a great, great gift of God. Here's another good one. He has given us the gift of freedom from fear. Are there things in this world in this life that you fear? I think there are for all of us. And I know that it's a greater problem for some than for others, but I think we all have things that we fear. And he has given us the gift of freedom from fear. The psalmist said, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. There's no con He's given us the gift of not being condemned. Do you know uh, Romans 8 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You know, I said a while ago that my sin doesn't condemn me, and you're, if you're a believer, your sin does not condemn you because the blood of Jesus Christ is at work in your life, taking away your sins. So we are never condemned. If we could wrap our minds around that, it would take care of some of those guilt issues we deal with all the time. We are not condemned. We have an advocate with the Father. Have you ever uh, been in a courtroom or seen one where there's an advocate speaking for, uh, many times they speak for children. A child will have an advocate, and the advocate will speak to the judge on behalf of the child. Jesus is our advocate, and the Bible even describes it like a courtroom, with God the Father being the judge and Jesus being our advocate, standing up for us, speaking for us to the Father, and the judge is his Father, so of course he's going to do what Jesus asks him to do. How, how much safer could we possibly be than to have an advocate before the Father, who is the Father's Son, by the way, pleading our case? We have the gift of the presence of God. Hebrews 13, 5, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So 
Folks, if you ever feel like God's not there, your feeling is wrong because God said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. No matter how you feel about it, doesn't matter. The word of God says that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. We have the great gift of God, the word of God, and this is where we learn about him, who he is, and, and what his uh, desires for us are. He tells us plainly, this is like a love letter written to you from a holy God. And Psalm uh, 119, 105 says that it's a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. So what guides us through this life? This does. He gives us the gift of provision. Like a good father, he provides for his children always. You may not have everything you want, and maybe you do, but you have everything you need if you're a believer because your heavenly father supplies it for you. You have the gift of his protection. He protects us against the enemy. The enemy is the evil one. So God sends his holy angels. Remember that study we did? And they surround us and they protect us. So we have the gift of God's protection. He restores my soul in Psalm 23. He said he restores my soul. Our soul is that part of us that relates to our humanness. Our spirit is is the part of us that relates to God. Our soul is the part of us that relates to us. And sometimes our soul needs to be restored or refreshed. And God does that for us. We have a future inheritance. The Bible says that everything God the Father gives to Jesus is ours too just going to read that one more time, and I hope it really sinks in and comes home to you. Everything God the Father gives to Jesus is ours too. A great promise and a great gift from God. He's given us the gift of being kept by God. The Bible says his power will keep us from all evil. He's given us the gift of guidance. God directs us steps of a righteous man, Bible says. So <clears throat> God will get you to where you need to be. This verse really came home to me years ago uh, on the par in the parking lot of the uh, TGY store in Wellington because I'd gone there to get something. Another lady had gone there to get something. We met out in the parking lot and we knew each other uh, sort of. We weren't good close friends, but uh, we were acquainted. And I got to share Jesus with her right there in the TGNY parking lot. And I thought, what are the chances of she and I meeting there? And then I remembered this verse that God directs our steps to where he wants us to be and where we need to be. So you see what that does? It takes all the worry out of me trying to get where I need to be to do what God wants me to do. God directs our steps, and he takes responsibility for getting us where we need to be so that he can use us to do what he wants us to do. And the, great, and the last one that we'll speak of today, although there are many, many more in Scripture, and I hope you'll see them as you read your Bible through this year, but he has offered uh, a free gift if you accept Jesus as your Savior, of a home in heaven forever. Wow, what kind of gift is that? The most wonderful thing, and it goes on forever and ever and ever. It never ends. Once a person enters into heaven, it is forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It never ends. It's a place of joy. It's a place of love and laughter and 
uh, a place where we'll be with our Savior, we'll be with our God, and we will be with each other. <clears throat> I'm going to close this morning uh, with a and reading a scripture in Ephesians chapter one. I'll begin with verse three. Ephesians one three. Ephesians gets off to such a good start. It is really hard for me to find a place to stop in it. But verse three says, How we praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Why? Because we belong to Christ. If you have received the gift of eternal life, you are his, and he blesses you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Because we belong to Christ long ago, even before he made the world, God loved us. And anytime you see that word loved where God loved us and, and it's past tense, that is always a reference to the cross because God has always loved us and does love us. So whenever you see a reference to Jesus or, uh, or to uh, that God says or Jesus says, and they use the word loved you, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And that's the past tense that it is always a reference to the cross of our Savior. God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy. And listen to this, without fault in his eyes. Without fault in the eyes of a holy God, how much better can it get than the gifts that God gives us every single day? His unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. The only way to get into that family, the only way to get to God is through Jesus Christ, our mediator. And this, listen to this, this is so sweet. It says, and this gave him, God, great pleasure. God took great pleasure in adopting us into his family. Wow. So we praise God for the wonderful kindness. God is kind too. He's joyful and he's kind and he's good. We praise God for the wonderful kindness he's poured out on us because we belong to his dearly loved son. He is so rich in kindness that he purchased our freedom through the blood of his son and our sins are forgiven. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God's secret plan has now been revealed to us. It is a plan centered on Christ, designed long ago according to his good pleasure. And this is the plan. At the right time, and I believe that time is quickly approaching, at the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. You see, Adam and Eve gave up that authority to, to Satan. And at the right time, Jesus has taken that back. And that's what this verse is about. Furthermore, because of Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us from the beginning and all things... Listen to this. This should bring peace to your heart. I hope it does. We're living in a time of turmoil. You don't have to be a part of it. Because he chose us from the beginning, and all, all things happen just as he decided long ago. Nothing surprises God. He's in control. Certain things are need to happen, and they're going to happen exactly the way that God says that they are. So we know our future does not depend on Washington, D.C. Our future is in the hands of a holy God who knows the beginning from the end and everything in between. We are so blessed with so many gifts that our God showers on us every day. And those gifts become ours when? When we receive them. We don't have to take them. He doesn't force them on us, but he says, here it is. 
It can be yours. It is yours if you will just accept it. And accepting it is our part. And then one day, I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day when all our troubles and heartaches have truly vanished away. We'll enjoy all the beauty where all things are new. I want to stroll over heaven with you. Thank you.